One thing that's pretty common with people who film videos indoors is they get a lot of reverb and echo off the walls. Hello, hey, you hear the echo? Echo! Uh, especially when you're in kitchens and bathrooms, anything that's got hard surfaces, you hear like the, vow, the, the voice bouncing off the walls and stuff. You don't want that if you want it to sound halfway decent. So I'm going to show you what I do to, uh, to deal with that. There's several things. One is um, you, you want the sound to not bounce off of the walls. So it's kind of hard. As you see, I'm in a hard, I'm in a huge uh, room here and I'm forced to film something here because my studio, which is downstairs, is being worked on. There's jackhammers and people working the construction crews. I can't do it until they're done with down there building it. So I have to temporarily film up here and it's echoey as hell so I have to create a non echoey environment in what I'm shooting so that's what I'm going to show you how I do the first thing you want to do is create a chamber that has stuff that doesn't uh, have sound bounce off of it fabric is the is the best thing for absorbing sound these are um, furniture blankets that you can get at U-Haul um, and any kind of, the, the more textured and rough and fuzzy the fabric is, the more it can absorb sound. Anything that's slick, like silk or dress shirts, they do not absorb sound very well. But bathrobes, anything that's fluffy and textured, that will absorb sound. So, or, or car, shag carpeting is, is awesome, but silk shirts and things are not. So you want to get fabric that's kind of, uh, as you know soft and fuzzy as possible so what I did is I created a room with this stuff and I have a green screen background so I have my green screen background and I have my lights around it the lights are what's limiting me from closing this whole thing in because it would be anyway uh, so what I did is I created this frame with stands and uh, aluminum beams and things and I have furniture blankets on the floor. Again, I got all these furniture blankets at uh, um, U-Haul or any kind of mo any moving company where they sell this stuff. And the idea is to surround yourself with as much sound absorbing material as possible. And you want to use microphones that kind of hear just in the area, not everywhere around. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, you're still hearing a little bit of an echo in here because this is all open up here and there's a, there's this big giant thing around me but at least I'm absorbing some of it here and I'm going to tell you how to get rid of the rest of it in a minute but that's the first step and I have a huge I've got a huge I'm in a church basically this is a, what, a 40 foot ceiling so I'm going to if there's, there's any echo I'm going to get a lot of it in this place so the first thing is to whatever you're going to film is to create an environment just the space that you're going to need and and close it in as much as possible put it on the floor this floor this is a marble floor if i didn't have sound blankets here sound would be bouncing off that hard surface there's there's marble and granite everywhere so this is the, a, a real challenge to to stop that so this is the first step is to surround yourself with as much fabric as possible it's actually if you're doing just sound recording and no video, go into a, a walk-in closet where there's a lot of clothes. When you're using shotgun mics in an echoey room, you, you, what you don't want is mics that have a lot of slots in the side. That, this picks up echo a lot more. What you want is a mic that has just a few on the tip, but nothing down the side. So the longer ones that have all these slots you're going to get a lot more reverb and echo in your recordings. What you want is mics that are, like I said, that don't have a lot of holes and going down the side of the mic. That's just kind of a basic rule. Uh, the best thing to do in an echoey room is having a mic that's taped underneath. I don't have it now. I'm just temporary. I'm just talking real quick on this thing, but it's having a, a, a mic taped underneath your shirt. So you have your shirt, absorbing a lot of the sound too and you're just getting what your chest you can actually talk through your chest if you listen to someone's chest half the sound is coming through their chest it's not just coming out of your mouth so that helps uh, isolate a lot of the stuff bouncing off the walls also step one is having a fabric environment two is using microphones that don't pick up a lot of the echo and three is to once you have the sound recorded is to use some software to take 
out, it's called D Reverb software, and I'm going to show you what I use. It takes some of the reverb out of the sound recording, so that's like the final step is to whatever you, is still in there, you can take most of it out if you have a pretty good situation where you took care of it as much as possible. So come into my temporary office, which is full of this gear everywhere. I don't have anywhere to store any of this until my studio is done. I have a sound file up that we just did yesterday. And it's got quite a bit of, it's got some echo on it. Okay. So we are going to be making German bratwurst sausage, but it's all vegan. Okay, so you, you heard that there's some echo in there. We got as much of it out as possible with the environment, but there's still some left bouncing off the walls. Um, so what you do is there's several programs that I use. One is by a company called Isotope. They have a D reverb plugin which learns as you're playing and it. It's all raw. And I have my translator here today. So as you're playing it, it's learning the uh, how much echo is in there. Thank you. Uh, danke schön. Mm. <laughs> the ingredients are very slow. It's an almond, walnut, and... And then when you have your reading, you push apply. And it starts calculating. It's quite a bit of calculations, but it takes like a minute or so. Okay. Any juicer that homogenizes. So just pull your juicer out, remove... So you hardly hear any echo at all now. Uh, I like the taste of liquid aminos. If you don't like aminos, you can use tamari or... So it sounds like it's really close to you and there's no echo. So as you can see, you can, if you really, if you, every little bit helps. Having the absorbing uh, environment with the fabric, having the right microphones in the right position, and then using the, the, the uh, de-reverbing. So another one that I use is by a company called Accusonis. It's a pretty good one too. It's just a one-click thing. Reverb remover. Just pull your juicer out. Remove the... So you can adjust the amount of removal that it does before it starts sounding kind of strange. And what I do sometimes is I do a pass with like the Accusonis reverb remover and then I do one with the Isotope reverb remover and then I put the two files on top of each other and cut them in half and use a little bit of this one, a little bit of this one so I get the best of both worlds. And mix mixing different versions of the same file sometimes helps lessen it even more. So I hope this helped. This is just a little thing uh, for people that are shooting indoors where the, the walls are echoey. Again, the, the more fabric carpeting, the more clothing, the more, you know, just put stuff around you that absorbs the sound. It's really basic stuff, but again, this channel is for people that are not super expert professionals. This is for people who want to know the basics and have some cool tips and see how I do strange things with <laughs> everyday materials that you guys can get to. So go to U-Haul or the moving companies, anybody that has, you know, moving blankets and furniture blankets, Home Depot might even have them, I don't know, but uh, that, that's a good start and they're cheap and you can just stick them up on the wall. So I hope this helped and uh, stay tuned for the next uh, audio video camera tips at Marcus Picks.